Hi everyone. I hope you've had a great week this past week. Today we're going to walk through lessons 81 to 84. So let's get started. This week you're going to need your lessons manual, the student worksheet book, the math card games manual with the game cards, the geared clock. You'll need the clock card decks. If you have one available, you'll also need a digital clock. This is not included in your Right Start Math materials. And you'll also need the drawing board. This week, your child is going to be learning more about telling time on a clock. Let's get started by turning to lesson 81. This lesson is going to use worksheet 48, which is the clock that your child drew for lesson 79. You are also going to need the minute clocks from one of the card decks. So you should have two different colors, either the, of the cards or of the print on the cards. You're only going to need one and you will need both the hour or the, just the minutes. So it comes with the hours, but you're only going to need, oops, you're only going to need the minutes if I can find them. Here we go the minute cards. So it has the colon and the minutes like that. Okay, the first paragraph of the warm up is actually a verbal word problem. And it says this, if you were to sleep 10 hours in a day, how many hours would you be awake? Now you'll want to start by asking you if your child is struggling with that, you might want to start by asking how many hours there are in a full day before reading that problem or before they start to solve it. Um, or you can actually flip the first and the second paragraphs of the warm up um, because the second paragraph is actually also going to ask how many there how many hours there are in the day. So the second paragraph will talk about how many hours there are in the day and how many hours are on the clock. If your child needs it, they can use uh, you can have them look at the clock that they drew in worksheet 48. However, see if they can do answer that question or those questions um, without the helps. First, give them time to think about it um, before you actually jump into giving them assistance. Now, the third paragraph of the warm up is going to be reviewing scales. You may want to draw a sample scale for your child to view before for this uh, problem. It's the questions that are asked in this paragraph. Now, the last two activities in the warm up is going to have your child count by twos and fives. If your child struggles with counting by twos and or fives, review them several times throughout the day to strengthen up those multiples. Look at the section called numbers around the clock. Be sure your child has the clock from worksheet 48 available. And then you're going to ask your child to use their finger to show how the hands are going to be moving on the clock. So they should start with the one or the 12 and then you're going to have your child point all the way around um, like this. And they're going to actually do it two times because it's going through the full day. So you'll have midnight to noon and then noon to midnight. Then you're going to follow up with questions to talk about what they did. You will then talk about clockwise and counterclockwise. Now my kids found it fun to turn in circles going clockwise and then counterclockwise kind of help reinforce that idea. The last sentence in this section will also talk about which direction um, they're going to use, need to turn the lid of a jar to open and close it, uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. So you may want to get a jar out, a jar of jelly or a jar of peanut butter or something for your child to uh, use to answer these questions. Take a look at the section called reviewing o'clock. You're going to give your child the geared clock and you're going to ask about the color of the hour hand and then the color of the hours. And if you'll notice, the hour hand points to, or is red and it points to all of the red numbers. Whereas the minute hand um, is blue and points to all of the blue dots and the little blue numbers uh, for the minutes when it shows the minutes. Take a look at the section called finding the hours. The first thing you're going to want to do is have your child point to various hours on the clock and then you're going to set the geared clock to one o'clock. Like this and you're going to say what time is it and they are to say one o'clock and then you're going to show your child how to write one o'clock 
um, in writing, in, in writing. So it'd be one colon zero zero. And then you will repeat that with different hours. Have your child say the time and if you want to have them go ahead and write the time as well. Even though that's not listed in the manual, I do recommend having your child practice writing those hours. Look at the section called the minute hand. In this section, you're going to discuss with your child how many minutes are in an hour. And then you're going to have your child notice the scale around the clock. And that is going to, each of these dots are going to represent minutes, but not every single minute is written out, right? So in the blue, um, you only have, it only has the five written down, but these other dots are just dots representing the minute, but it doesn't tell you exactly which minute. You will then have your child uh, move the minute hand of the clock to point to 12, just like this. And then you're going to move the minute hand around the clock and have them take a look what happens to the hour hand. So as you move it around, you'll see what happens to the hour hand. It's moving alongside, but at a much slower pace. And then you're going to have your child point to um, the hour again, or to the 12 o'clock again, or have your minute hand point to the 12. And then you're going to move the minute hand halfway around the clock. And you're going to ask what happened to the, to the hour hand and show that it's halfway between the two hours. Now take a look at the section called the minute clock cards. You're going to give your child the minute clock, minute cards, which are these here. This is in the yellow. <laughs> so they all have the colons in front of them. And they're also they're going to put these minute hands or minute cards around the clock that they drew in worksheet 48. And you're going to start with the zero zero. And so you're going to start by putting zero zero up on top, and then you're going to um, have them work around the clock. So then 05, 10, 15, etc. You're also going to tell them that when zero zero is at the 12, we're going to call it o'clock. So whatever the hour is and then o'clock. And then when you do show them 05, or the five, you're going to say, when you have this time, you're going to say, this is 05. So it'd be 305 or 605. That's how they say those, uh, that, that time. Look at the section called minute memory game. When playing this game, your child is going to use the clock that they drew in worksheet 48. And then the second player will need to use the clock from the math card games manual appendix page 14. I recommend making a copy of that appendix page 14, or you can make a copy of the clock that they drew. You will need the two different clock decks, the two different colored ones, either the, the I don't know which ones you have, um, either the two different colors of the card themselves or the two different color prints on the card. You will only need the minute cards for that partic this particular game. Now the special element to this game is that the cards need to be found in order. So you need to start with o'clock, then 05, 10, 15, 20, and so forth. If needed, your child can use the geared clock as a reference but try to have them work those, uh, this game without it if possible. The next game played for this lesson is Minute Solitaire. This game is played with one player, but you can sit in with your child if you want. The game is only needing one set of minute cards, um, and then the minutes are going to be placed around the clock in any particular order. So that's going to be the different element of this particular game. We do have a blog for this game. It's called 2017 Summer Game Number 6, Minute Solitaire. Well, let's go ahead and turn to Lesson 82. This lesson will also need worksheet 48. They will also need a digital card or digital clock and two sets of the minute cards. The digital clock is not included in the Right Start Math materials. Uh, for the thir three paragraphs at the top of the warm up, um, the child is going to just be reviewing time. Now, the last two sections of the warm up is going to have your child count by twos and by fives. Again, if your child struggles, review it several times throughout the day. Look at the section called Seeing the Tens. This section will also need worksheet 48 again. And you're going to start by having your child lay down all of the minute cards around the clock 
and then have them remove all of the minute cards that are on the odd hours. So you will remove all of the cards that are on one, three, five, seven, nine, and 11, and leave all of the rest of the minute cards out there. And then you're going to ask a question or some questions about the pattern that they see. And here's the pattern. For hour two, your minute is 10. Well, half of two is one, right? Which is the first digit of 10. For four, four has the minute of 20. Half of four is two, which is the first digit in 20 and so forth. So that's kind of like the pattern. Um, then you're going to have your child replace all of the minute cards again, back to the back to the clock. Look at the section called telling time. In this section, your child is going to be working with the geared clock again, and you will have your child set the time to three o'clock. And then ask your child to move the minute hand every five minutes and to say the time. Now, don't forget to let them know that when they hit the one, the time would be 305. So that's how they would say that number. You're going to do the same thing all the way through the clock, and they're going to do the same thing from hour four to five, uh, moving the minute hand five minutes and saying that new time. Then you're going to want to set the clock at different times as shown in the manual, and then have your child say that time. Do it as do this activity as many times as you need until your child is able to say those times without too much difficulty. Take a look at the section on the top of the second page called digital clock. If you have one, show your child the digital clock. You're going to discuss and compare the digital clock with the analog clock in this section. Then you're going to have your child complete worksheet 50. In this worksheet, your child is going to match the digital time with the analog time. There is not a math card game listed for this section or for this lesson. If your child is struggling with the analog clock or just needs more review to get faster, you're gonna to wanna to play the games minute memory game or minute solitaire game that you played in lesson 81. If your child needs more challenges, you can have them play P10, which is a multiplication memory game. It's basing on multiplication, um, and but you want to use multiples of five since that's what we're kind of covering this lesson. So uh, P10, multiplication memory, using the multiples of five. We do have a blog for that game. It's 2017 summer game number 14, multiplication memory. Well, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 83. You are again going to need worksheet 48, and you will also need the full clock card decks for this lesson as well, which means you're going to need both the hours and the minutes. The first two paragraphs of the warm up is basically reviewing telling time. Um, you can review any of the previous lessons as needed if your child struggles with any of these questions. Paragraph three is again going to be another verbal word problem. Let your child use whatever resources they need to solve this problem. You're going to complete the warm up by counting by fives. Um, you may also want to review their multiples of twos and tens if you would like, especially if your child was struggling on those multiples as well. Take a look at the section called half hours and quarter hours. You're going to give your child the geared clock again and have them set it to six o'clock. And then you're going to have your child move the minute hand halfway. And you're going to then talk about half of an hour. Then you're going to ask what is half of a half? Give your child time to think about that. Um, if they're really stumped, get out, get out their fraction chart and let them figure out what is half of a half. And by the way, so you know, one half of a half is one fourth, which we also call a quarter. So then the next section, of course, in the lesson is going to be talking about quarter of an hour using the geared clock. And specifically, you're going to be working on quarter after an hour and quarter till an hour. Now, my kids kind of struggled with this concept. And if that's the happens in your family, uh, make sure they take the geared clock and you just uh, push uh, the minute hand around over and over and you have their child move at every quarter of an hour and then say the time in quarters and half. So this would be eight, a quarter after eight. This would be half after eight. This would be quarter till nine, and then of course, nine o'clock. And just have them keep going around and around the clock until they are comfortable with quarter after and quarter till. 
On the top of the second page, there's a game called Minute Mixups Game. There is not a blog for this game. You're going to start by setting up the clock as shown on the top of the second page of the lesson. Then the first player is going to turn around while the second player mixes up two different minute cards. When they've done that, then this first player then turns back around and finds the two mixed up cards and puts them in the correct place. And then the players switch roles. Take a look at the section called Telling Time on a Clock. For this activity, your child is going to need to find the hour card and the minute card for the time that you say, and all of the times are listed in the lesson manual. Once they find those time cards, they're going to put them together and say the name. So they would, I'm just gonna make this one up because these are two cards that are handy. So they would say 405, and then they're going to put these cards off to the side. Then you're going to say the next time. Now, again, the times are listed in the manual. Once this activity has been completed, all the hour and minute cards should be used. Then your child is going to complete worksheet 51. Remind them to draw their line from the scale, just like from the scale up here to the point, the center point. That way um, their lines are straighter. <laughs> Check their answers on the worksheet and discuss anything that they got wrong. All right, well, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 84. The first paragraph of the warm up is um, talking about quarters in regards to time. And the second paragraph is talking about analog, uh, comparing basically analog and digital clocks. The third paragraph is going to be asking general questions about time. And then the fourth paragraph is again asking a verbal word problem. Let your child use whatever resources they need to calculate those hours. Take a look at the section called drawing a clock. Here you're going to have your child draw a clock on the whiteboard without using um, any resources, without looking at the geared clock or worksheet 48 or any other clocks that you have in your home. You're going to want to make sure your child knows where all of the numbers go, particularly the 12, the 3, the 6, and the 9. And then, of course, making sure they know where all of the minutes go. Um, you'll want to have them finish it up um, without looking at any resources. After they finish drawing the clock, go over that clock and go over anything that they had incorrectly. You are also going to want to make sure that they put the hours on the out on the inside of the clock. So the hours are going to go, oops, hours are going to go on the inside of the clock, and the minutes are going to go on the outside of the clock. Look at the top of the second page called Reading Any Minute on a Clock. For this section, your child is going to read a scale that you draw that is similar to the clock scale, except for it's going to be horizontal. The scale is going to have one tick for every single number, and then you're going to draw arrows at various numbers and have your child tell you what minute it's pointing to. Now, if this is a struggle for your child, add as many numbers as needed so that your child can uh, see exactly what minute it's pointing to and being able to do that a little bit more automatically. If your child is struggling with scales, you can go back to uh, lesson 78 to review that lesson as needed. Take a look at the explanations um, to the right of that section. It says, note, we are counting spaces, not lines. The line is the landing spot. The space in between is what we count. This is a really important concept and something that my child, my daughter really struggled with. Once she figured out that she was actually counting the spaces between the ticks, it really helped her a lot. So if your child's kind of struggling with that, you might want to uh, consider that um, explanation as well. Under the section called reading time to the minute, you're going to give your child the geared clock again and have them find the exact minute that you say. Give as many examples as needed for your child to be confident in finding those times. For the section called set to the minute game, you are going to write down various times and have your child set the clock to those times that you wrote down. You'll want to check your answer, check their answer, and then switch places. Have your child write down a time and you set the clock and then have your child check it. You may want to miss a few of your times on purpose to see if your child can catch your mistake. The next game listed in the lesson is called name the minutes game. 
This game is similar to the previous game, except player one will set the time on the clock and the other player will write down the time. Then player one will check the answer and then they will switch roles again. Once your child is well practiced on telling time and writing the time, then they can go ahead and do worksheet 52. Once they're completed with that worksheet, check their answers and discuss anything that they missed. If telling time to the minute is difficult for your child, practice this skill throughout the day. Set random times on the gear clock and have your child say the number to the minute. If you have a working analog clock in your home, then periodically ask your child what time it is um, to the minute and let them use the analog clock to figure that out. Well, that's it for the week. If you have any questions or concerns about a lesson or if your child is struggling with something, give us a call or email us. We're here to help. I look forward to seeing you next week when we cover lessons 85 to 88. Have a great week, everybody.